Well, it turns out that there is something else to say. After the last session, a member of the audience came up to me and asked me some excellent questions, which I'm now going to answer. So one of the questions is, where does the unit for this monoid come from? And the first answer is that it doesn't come from this unit axiom over here. But what it actually comes from is from the empty word here. There is an empty word, remember, and that has to go somewhere. And now I'm in trouble because I was a bit hazy about my notation here. So now, because I've got some time, I'm going to be a little bit pedantic about my notation and say, given, given an algebra for this monad, given an algebra for t, I'm going to construct a monoid. We construct a monoid. Now, a monoid is usually defined as being a set equipped with a binary operation which is unital and associative. So, given an algebra, we've certainly got a set. So, given an algebra beta like that, we construct a monoid. So, the, the set, the underlying set is A. And what's A times B? going to be. Well, A times B is going to be theta applied to the binary word A comma B. Now, this is where here, I should really have written this as being theta on the four-ary word A, B, C, D. So, what's the unit for this monoid going to be? Well, the unit for this monoid is going to be theta of the empty word. The empty word is a perfectly good element of this set. Theta has to send it somewhere, and I'm going to call it 1. So now, we've got to show that this is associative and unital. Now, both of the, associative, the, the associativity and the unitality both come out of this, this square that was over here and have nothing to do with this triangle. So what's this triangle saying? Well, really what this triangle is saying is that theta of A, coming down here, theta of A had to be equal to what was coming down here, which is A. That is to say, we've got this action theta. It's not allowed to do anything remotely interesting on the one element words. It has to just leave them exactly as they are. So the unitality and the associativity came from the interaction of theta with mu over here. And here's the interesting point, which is that if we didn't if we didn't want it to be associative or unital, we could change t and have a perfectly good T giving a set with a binary operation that was neither unital nor associative. Now, in our definition of T, we built in the fact that it was associative because we gave not just binary operations, but we gave enary operations for all n. And for anyone who knows anything about bicasteries, which all I know is nobody in this room except, except, except me, um, this is sometimes known as the, the difference between a biased thing and an unbiased thing. When we define something with a binary operation and then apply an associativity axiom to it, what we're really saying is that given any length n thing, it's completely unambiguous how we could have multiplied it together. What we usually say with a monoid is that we have a binary operation, but associativity tells us that if we try to multiply n things in a row, there'd only be one way of doing it. That's one way of defining it. You can also do it the other way and say, we're going to start with a way of multiplying n things in a row for every n, and then after the event, make sure that they all interacted with each other properly. And that's what this monad way of looking at things is. But this is how we translate between the binary way of doing things and the unbiased way of doing things. And I think that's all I'm going to say for now.